let's move into a bit of AFL fantasy. Now, we haven't talked about this for a couple of weeks. Like we um, have on the screen right now, guys, if you want to join our AFL Fantasy League, you can. And like we said at the start of the podcast, um, we will be giving away a $125 gift voucher if you win the league um, that we've got currently. So if you want to join the AFL Fantasy League, make sure to join up. Code's on the screen right now. If you're listening, it's VDCR926F. Pretty sure I got that right. It's very small on my screen. Can you see it better? That's how I read it. That's how you read <laughs> That's it? That's how I read it. That's what we're going to go with, guys. If you can't join the league because you've, um, you're have you listening and we said the code wrong, just go watch the YouTube video. But I just want to go over my team quickly. So I'll show it on screen right now what my team is looking like. You said your team hasn't changed too much. I don't think I have changed it. I haven't really looked at it. I look at it more closer to when the preseason games start. Yeah. And did you hear what um, Dwayne Russell said? That we're wa- AFL is wasting February with no preseason games. I think that's fair enough. I mean, they're having two games, basically, the AFL teams. One of them is like just a... not Sorry, not, I was going to say an intra-club. It's not an intra-club, but it's a it's a small... Um, match simulation. F- match simulation. And the second one is like a true practice game, and then yeah. that's it. Yeah. Like, no. leagues around the world have like cup competition. Well, not cups, but, you know, the NFL has like four games before you get into the main season. I did like when the AFL used to do that. Mm. Now, I know why they kind of don't anymore, because there's a lot of injury concerns, but... That's just going to happen. I mean, injuries are just going to happen. You can't... Oh, we can't play any, like, extra games, like, before the season starts because, you know, oh, there could be an injury concern. That's just going to happen. I mean, yeah. look at the West Coast Eagles. If you've been seeing the news, the West Coast Eagles have had so many injuries already. Again. And soft tissues. <laughs> Again. So, I don't know how their season's going to go. But let's get into the AFL Fantasy team. So, on screen right now is my AFL Fantasy team. My defense hasn't changed much, I don't think, at all um, since we last talked about it a couple of months ago. Uh, last month, sorry. Um, midfield, I don't think's changed much. I think I've got Matt Crouch in at the moment. That's the main one that's changed. I will, um, when we get to the first couple of pre, when the first preseason game kind of drops, I'll be looking a lot more into the buys for those first couple of weeks because I really want to have Sam Walsh in my team. But after opening round, I think his buy is in round two. Yeah, so that's why everyone's a bit a- a- apprehensive to get him. So I'm still thinking about that one. But also, you are only getting 18, point, 18 players play through those buy rounds. So I'm still thinking maybe I'll just hold through mm. and see what happens. But that's not a guarantee just yet. Um, Ruck, that's not changing unless there's an injury. And then my forward line. Now, this is the real big question mark is the forward line. Now, I can see Zach Fisher. He's done a hamstring injury, so you want to get rid of that one pretty quick. But um, Jack McRae also has done a soft tissue injury in his preseason so far. Now, I don't know if it's going to keep him out of round one, but that's a concern also Mm. for the Bulldogs. So forward line, a lot of people are almost thinking you go super cheap on your forward line. Yeah, and and then... You know, just see in the first couple of weeks how things are planning mm-hmm. out and maybe put some midfielders. And then maybe that's when you start picking up the forwards that look like they're going to be having a good year. Yeah, yeah. I think it's... Like we've we've seen with every other fantasy guru said, fan, yeah, the forward line is very, very short this year. Yeah, I mean, obviously yeah. players like Taranto, Golden... Butters, Rosie, there are, and a bunch more were all forward mids last year. Yeah. So the forward lines, you would you would have stacked forward lines. I think there was a lot of times last year when my mid when my uh, midfield was my lower scoring position because my forward line and my defense were doing really really yeah. well. Yeah, and I think that they've done that this season because they don't want to have so many um, top teams having the same players in them. Yeah, but also, I mean, I don't think... I mean, the players like Gould and Taranto, all those players, they weren't playing forward line. Yeah. So, and, yeah, and yeah and I mean, that's kind of fair. So, so, yeah, I think you just got to find the, um, yeah, the needle in the haystack of the, the first couple of weeks in the forward line. You might as well experiment with your forward line in the first couple of weeks and see what happens. Pick some rookies, pick some, like, maybe a, a player of difference, see yeah. what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with my reserves, that's kind of changed a little bit. Now, Jai Clark from Geelong, there's been a lot of good talk about him. He was, um, I think, injured for most of last year and didn't play too many games. I think he played one or two. Yeah. Um, so he's been in my team. And um, Matt Roberts for the Swans. Now, he played a couple of games last year, but then got an injury and didn't play for the majority of the rest of the season. Mm. He has had a lot of really good chatter about him almost, almost a, 
almost cementing a round one spot for the Swans. Opening round. But whatever. <laughs> I love that. Whatever. <laughs> um, but there's been a lot of good talk about Matt Roberts. It looks like he could be playing off because he's got a really good left foot. Um, so he could be playing off a half back role, similar to how uh, Nick Blakey and that sort of kind of do, obviously a Nick Blakey role mm. um, would be really good for him. But he's also playing a little bit of wing time, so that'd be really good to see. Um, Heath for St Kilda, he's a ruck forward, 200k. There's been a lot of talk about him as well, and he's had a pretty good preseason. The only problem is obviously Rowan Marshall has that spot locked up, and yeah. obviously that's not ha- that's not changing. Yeah. But he has been playing a little bit of forward in the preseason, so there mm. could be some talk of maybe him playing as a key forward early in the season, see what happens. Mm. Um, and Manor as well for Geelong. There's been a lot of good talk about him as well f- um, off the preseason. So um, I've got him. Cadman, uh, that was your pick. I'm you're, still pretty, you're yeah, adamant that he's I'm in the team. And, um, yeah, I'll be the first one to say that if he has a great season, it's all because of me. I'll be the oh, first okay. one to oh, so so yeah. um, drop that one down. Yeah, I mean, it was your. I mean, you, Adam Kingsley should be giving you a phone call. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, and the last one I got here is um, McAuliffe. Now, he's a big body midfielder, from my understanding. He's had a really good preseason for Richmond in his first. Um, I think it's his first preseason, but he's had a lot of talk about him and he's had a pretty good start. So, um, that's kind of my team at the moment. Now, because you really haven't changed much in your team, what I was going to do is go through some, um, pre- uh, some intra club sort of. S- news and that sort of stuff. Yeah. They're talking about some players who are having a really good preseason. Now, there's a guy on um, Twitter, I'm not going to call it X, so go away, um, who's been posting a lot of stuff. He's, I think he's a former journalist. So we know we feel about journalists here, but this guy seems to know his shit. Um, it's uh, Nerds for Life over on Twitter. Um, go follow it because he's giving out a lot of good information regarding the match simulation stuff. And um, he does it for, I think he focuses a lot more on super coach, but basically here all he's talking about is players who are having good preseason games or match sim, match sim so far. So they said um, for Carlton first, we have uh, Lockie Cowan. Looks like he's having a really good preseason. He did play a couple of games early for Carlton. Yeah. Um, and then kind of got left out of the team, but he's having a good preseason so far. Um, Zach Williams. Looks like he's still a few weeks away from joining the main group, but Doherty believes he will strike straight into the 22, so the best 22, so that's mm. good to hear for um, Zach Williams owners, that's, that's me included. That, yeah, that's, yeah, but the thing is, he's always only average about 80, 85. Yeah, so my, my feeling about that is maybe I'm going to downgrade that to a Nick Caulfield, depending on how he starts, because yeah, that's it, he's a lot cheaper, yeah. and I think he can average pretty similar. Yeah. So that's my only thinking about that. Um, Sam Walsh looks like he's moving well as well, so it looks like he's pretty much a lock. Um, Paddy Cripps looks like he's having a pretty good start, and because he's a little bit cheaper than Sam Walsh, could be an interesting choice for him. And then um, Sam uh, Tom DeConing, sorry, we obviously saw him have a really good end of the year. Mm. Looks like he's moving well as well for Carlton. Not really too much I'm changing about my team there, but Sam Walsh looks yeah, like he's moving well. Sam Walsh is the one that... I, I, I've got him and I'm going to hold him even though he's going to be the round two buy I'm still going to hold him I think I've got everything else in suit what, yeah. Yeah, what I'm going to have for him so and then on to Port Adelaide he has some interesting news that, well, we have some interesting news that um, Jordan Sweet could potentially be the number one ruck for Port Adelaide because um, a lot of people don't know this but Ivan Soldo um, had some surgery at season's end on his finger and there's actually been some re, uh, some complications with it, so he had to reoperate. They had to reoperate on it, so he's only getting back to skills work at the moment. Mm. So there's some talk that Jordan Sweet could be the number one ruck early for Port Adelaide. Well, I think he deserves it. I think he was always. He would be two. so annoying. He was always number two at um, the Bulldogs, and then he comes to Port Adelaide, and then they straight up oh, you're thinking, oh he's gonna be the number one, and then literally half. The next day, Soldo shows up, yeah. and they take him. It's like <laughs> that, was, that was pretty shitty. That yeah. was pretty rude. But yeah, let's talk about him. Um, they've also got talk about Ollie Wines. It does look like in these uh, in this preseason, he's been training as a inside mid, as he should be. I think we all, as we all know, that he's a he's the bowl. At the yeah. moment, I'm definitely fifty fifty on either him or Matt Crouch. Yeah, that because they're both about similar price. I know um, Ollie Wine's about seven hundred k. That's um, I'm just sitting sitting on that one, just waiting. I want to watch that first preseason game, see mm-hmm. where he plays, and then I'll decide. Yeah, I think I think he need him to play like he did in his Brownlow year, put out late. Yeah, 
to just... Uh, yeah, no, I think that's that's yeah. definitely fair enough. Um, there's also been a little bit of talk about um, Jace uh, Burgoyne. He was playing on the wing in the ones, and Josh Sin, another draftee from a couple of years ago, was playing at half back. Yeah. So that's a couple of other Port Adelaide players. Probably not too many of them I'm thinking about at the moment with Sin and Burgoyne, but just a little bit of talking points. They're also saying that Rosie just going through a little load management at the moment, and Butters looks very, very good. So that's good news for Port Adelaide, and... Um, yeah, AFL fantasy people out there. Um, with North Melbourne. Now, there is a bit of talk about Charlie Combin. Now, mm. you've heard a bit about him. Obviously, he's a tall player. Mm. But it looks like for North Melbourne, they're training him to be the guy who's taking the kickouts. So, yeah. he's a very low price for what he's yeah. about 300k. Yeah. I'm not seeing him averaging more than 60, though. No. That's I, just I, my I problem just, with I it. I just... He's a very... Like you said, he's a very tall player, so... They, even though the North Melbourne do play a lot of games at Marvel, so the wind and rain won't affect him marks wise, but he does look like in a couple of like pre season intra clubs that he is doing very well with his intercept marking. So yeah. that could be a little bit of a look, bait and see. Mm. But that's yeah. just a little bit of an interesting but one. But the thing is also he is very injury prone, so it's very that yes, he's a low price, but you don't want to get him and then he gets out, goes out the first two minutes of the first quarter. Yeah. He gets his, and he gets a he gets a zero, so yeah, that's just my concern with him as well. Um, looks like that uh, David Giniak's doing pretty well, as well mm. as Giant Simpkin. He looks like he's impre- he's um, impressing in preseason, which he's actually really low as a price at the moment in AFL Fantasy. He only averaged about 80-odd last year, so maybe he can bounce back after having a pretty poor 2023. Mm. Um, Powell looking well as well. And yeah, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, Zach Fisher um, is... I don't know if he'll be there for round one. Well... No, they're, they're, he's round one, right? Mm. Yeah, he's round one. He's not opening round. So, <laughs> bit yeah. of talk. So he obviously gets the extra week. Yeah. So we'll just wait and see on that one. But he was with the injury group at that stage. Um, going on to the Swans. So I did mention Matt Roberts a little bit earlier. Dean Cox had some good words to say about him in his intra in his intra club and his couple of movements. Um, Callum Mills actually announced as the sole captain for the Swans today. So I thought that was interesting news. So I um, uh, think uh, for the. Yeah, fuck big you. finger to Kane Corns or something? Or? Yeah, big finger to Kane, <laughs> big fucking middle finger to Kane Corns. Oh, he shouldn't even be captain anymore. Shut up. The Swans, it showed that the Swans did not give a fuck. No. <laughs> I mean, they obviously cared like, oh shit, he's injured. But, but not like, like, oh, you're a fucking arsehole. It was more like, yeah, and boys will be boys in a way. Yeah, a little. <laughs> They'll have a bit of fun, a little bit of fun after mm. the season. Mm. Anyway, um, Isaac, uh, Isaac Heaney um, was training with the midfielders and the forwards, so Still he not, could... Yeah. Yeah, he's, I'm not. I'm not getting him yet. He's the Petrarca of years gone by. Do you think you? Well, you think he's going to be like Petrarca? He's going to get Well, I, no, time. that's the thing. He was always that Petrarca type, and he that when he first started, oh yeah, he's playing midfield, and then he never did. Yeah. He played there for five minutes every game for some. Yeah, yeah, for some weird reason. I yeah, don't no, think that. No. I think the Swans at the moment kind of need him up forward just to see how they go just with, I, I, with the new yeah. three way three tall prong forward line I don't think he'll go midfield too much he may he may float through there but I don't think he's going to be a mainstay no that's just for anyone who's going to get him because a lot and a lot of people have talked about him because he's one of the higher price forwards mm. but at this stage I'd be very cautious I would avoid that's just I, I've went for it a couple the last couple of years because then because the what they suck, they've sucked me in for it. Yeah. And then about round three, I'm realising he's not playing midfield. Yeah. And yeah, I, yeah, it screws me up. Yeah. They've said the Sam Reid's having a pretty good pre-season so far. Looks injury-free. I I, I don't know his price exactly, but yeah, that's a bit of concern. I, I'd still be very cautious about that one. Mm. Brody Grundy looking very good. I think everyone kind of saw this happening because yeah. he's a sole ruck. He's got a chip, he'll have a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. He's going to play. Yeah, him. a lot of people have said that too. Yeah, he's going to... I'll say he'll average 100 and he'll get you 100 every week. Yeah, I think he's going to be very impressive for the Swans and I'm very happy to hear about that. Um, and last one is James Jordan. He is a very interesting choice. I may go pick him up depending on how Taylor Adams goes in a couple of preseason games. Because yeah. James Jordan, same position as Taylor Adams, forward mid, mm. 200k cheaper and is having a massive preseason for the Swans. Yeah. Um, could definitely be a choice in that forward role um, as we get closer to the season. Um, after that, we've got the Gold Coast Suns. Flanders having a really good year, uh, really good preseason, and the massive news: full time mid. It looks like perfect, great news. What we need to hear: we need some for something for the forward one. Yeah, exactly. I, I, he's been my only forward that I'm like, yeah, that's They're the only high price forward I'm 
I'm locking in. Locking in. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bailey Humphrey looks like he's impressive uh, preseason as well. Rotating through midfield and half forward, so not really a surprise there. Mm. What is a really surprising one, which I was shocked to see, was Alex Sexton has been training in a new role at half back. Yeah, I know that's what really. Was, yeah, they're training him at half back. Yeah, so. I don't know about that one. I think that interesting look there. I think well, to be honest, I think it's the only way he was actually going to get into the team. Yeah. To be honest, that they, they had so many good forwards. Yeah. But, well, quality forwards. Well, considering he doesn't put on defensive pressure, yeah, he's need, not big enough to be a tall forward. Yeah, and so. he's. I to be honest, it was either half back or a wing. Really, I think that I think it was half back or you're sitting in the VFL till we delist you next year. But anyway, that may yeah. be a bit harsh. Um, Took Miller looks like he is. Looking, looking really, really good. That's good to see. And mm-hmm. Noah Anderson and um, Matt Rowe, not really any updates at this stage. Uh, moving on to Essendon. Nate Caddy's actually had a really good start to preseason. That's the draftee. Uh, I think we've seen... I think you, everyone's yeah. seen the, like, the little clip of him taking a specky. Yeah. Whatever, that was good. Um, Zach Reed, uh, draftee from a couple of years ago, looking good. Uh, I think he's a really low-priced defender, so he's looking mm-hmm. good. Um, Jay Gresham... Forward, but uh, he's getting a little bit of midfield time in the preseason. I don't trust no, I don't that trust too him. much. I've never trusted Jay, Jay Gresham, and I never will. <laughs> yeah, Sam Durham is getting a lot of um, center uh, CBAs, sorry, uh, yeah. center bounce attendances. So, and he was actually the standout performer in one of their in the um, intra club game. So that's good to see for Essendon. Um, on to Melbourne. Oop, that didn't work. Yeah, on to Melbourne. Um, I think they've had a little bit of news about Jack Billings. It looks like they, it looks like he's going to be playing more half forward. He did have a in couple the of CBAs. Yeah, nice, nice. He's going to be playing the BFL football. Yeah, played. Oh, it looks like more <laughs> on the wing. So I don't know how that will play. He, he's definitely not getting a spot in Melbourne. Team. He's on the wing. <laughs> but, but anyway, anyway. Um, Caleb Windsor, this guy, mid forward, started on the wing, but also got involved in quite a few CBAs. And they've shown a couple of clips of this guy. He looks like he could be a round one starter. Mm. He's a forward mid, so. I think he's about 250, 260K. Mm. This guy could be something. So Caleb Windsor, keep an eye on. Um, Trent Rivers ran through the midfield and dominated throughout the um, intra club game. That's another interesting one, Trent Rivers. There's been a lot of people just potentially picking him up as a defender. Mm. And um, Tom Fullerton was injured as well. I think we already, I think we may have already talked about that. I'm not too sure. But yeah, uh, not that he was really a choice anyway. I don't think anyone was going to be picking him up anytime soon. No. Um, Especially with Max Scorn now, he's. I think they've got to realise he's going to be their number one run. Yeah, that's definitely. Try, they're not going to trial that with him playing forward. Yeah. All right. Next one we've got is Fremantle. Sam Darcy running on restricted minutes at the moment, so not the best. Um, Hayden Young looks like he's playing through the midfield, so I think that we've kind of known that for now. So that's good to see. Um, just think that's really the only one, except for, and get ready for this one. This is going to be the. This is going to be one that's going to be tossed and turned for quite a while away up to round one is Nat Fife. I know it's a very... He's been so injury prone for the last few years, but they keep on talking about how good yeah, he's moving this year. Um, and they look like they're going to be putting him midfield. I don't know. I'm going to hold off, but Nat Fife could be a potential option as well if you want to go for a mid-price for Yeah, I, I don't know. I think there's so many negative thoughts to say picking him up. Yeah, I, I'm avoiding. I'm just saying that now. Yeah. But that is definitely one that you guys can think about. Um, next one is the West Coast Eagles sticking into WA. Harley Reid playing off that halfback and uh, midfield role. He's going to be racking him up all year. He, um, he's your number one lock. He's your number one lock. Yeah, he's a forward. Like. Basically, you've got Sam Flanders and then 300k for um, Harley Reid and the rest you just like random pick. You've got to pick with <laughs> Neil Lowe and for the, the rest of the forwards. Shea Bolton might be a good option though. I've, I'm pretty sure I'm going to pick him. Yeah. At the moment. He hasn't really been talked about. Yeah, he hasn't. Time. And I don't know. Yeah, you think he would be, but it's yeah, interesting. Not really a lot of talk about him so far. Um, the other one I want to talk about is Elliot Yo. He no. looks... <laughs> According to Nerds for Life over on Twitter, so, you know, this stage, I'm keeping him reliable. He's done some pretty good work. Looking fit. He's a mid, very low price for what he could be. His ceiling yeah. is massive. Yeah, he's, he's a defensive massive. midfielder. I'm steering clear. <laughs> for yeah. now. For now. I, I've, I started with him last season, and he got injured. But pre-season. Didn't touch him until we came back. Yeah. 
brought him back in and then he got re-injured th- two weeks later. <laughs> Not going to do it again. Yeah. I think I'm just steering clear like you said. Yeah. Um, next is Geelong. We've got Jack Bowes having a heap of the footy playing at half back to the wing role. I think we'll be getting a lot more of a opportunity this year and a lot more of a you know, opportunity near the ball rather than playing in like a weird position that he was playing. I don't like, know where he was playing last season. Yeah, half, playing like, half the games that he was actually playing in, you didn't, I didn't hear his name until about third, three quarter time. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I'm going to leave that one for now. Um, Sean Manor, like I mentioned before, looks lively and will be pushing for a spot on the side early. So that's really good news. That's obviously, if you guys don't remember, he was the guy playing for Werribee last year in the VFL had a massive grand final against the Gold Coast and a losing team, and he got picked up by Geelong in the draft. He looks like he could be something. Mature age pickup, I think he's like 26 years of age, so mm-hmm. you know, kind of now or never for him. He's definitely showing that he wants to have an AFL career. That's really good to see. And that's really all for Geelong. Uh, a couple of rookies, Conor O'Sullivan, um, decent making, used off halfback when um, Stewart was being rested. And obviously, he looks like he'd be playing midfield time. I'm staying clear of Tom Stewart for now. I don't know how that's going to work. But there were two games that he played in his um, career, apparently, in the midfield. He's attended 25% or more centre bounces. And in those games, he scored 124 and 152. Mm. He could be a really good choice in the midfield for fantasy. I don't know if it's a good option for the Cats, but he could be a good choice in fantasy for some points. That's just what I've heard anyway. Yeah. Um, next, we've got the Crows. Just one, talking about Josh Rochelle. Um, he has been confirmed on SEN that he'll be playing more midfield time this year. Now, yeah. he did have a pretty good start to the year for the Crows last year, but then he kind of petered off towards the end of the season. Luckily, mm-hmm. just before I was about to pick him up, and he started to peter off, and I'm like, thank God, because I nearly <laughs> picked him up and wasted, and he just dropped, plummeted in price. But, yeah, that's one for the Crows. He's only he's only about... I think four, five hundred, maybe six hundred, low six hundred k. So maybe a choice as a forward line. Mm. Definitely a watch early in the season. Um, like we mentioned with the Bulldogs, um, McRae had an injury. English has only just started um, full contact training. I think he had a bit of off season surgery. So um, bit of a watch on Tim English. I don't know if a lot of people are actually picking him because I think if anyone's he's, picking he's so him, he's so high price. He's yeah, so high. Well, he's the highest, I think, isn't he? Yeah, yeah he'd be the highest. He's just, it's very hard to take a million dollar player and. Sp- space everything else around especially with such a high yeah, especially when your midfield is kind of you're almost picking at least one maybe even two players in the midfield at a million because yeah, yeah. there are a lot of them there that you kind of need at the start of the season mm. so yeah um, Harms and Sanders both played really well in their yeah. pre-season game if Harms was a forward mid I would be picking him but mm. I don't think he's a forward mid I think he's just straight mid but Sanders is uh, almost a lock for me in that midfield, like a cheap midfielder yeah. so far. His, him there with McKercher, that's kind of what I've gone with. And um, Jeremy Sharp for Fremantle, who, by the way, has also been talked about quite, quite yeah, well, positively. Yeah, well, I always knew he would. When, yeah. when he left the goalpost, the three were going to pick him up. He just for, for me, I just knew he was just going to play well. Yeah. And then finally, um, Darcy, which is Sam Darcy and Rory Lobb, are competing for the same third tool slash second ruck role. So you sure that Sam Darcy will get that because Rory Lobb looks like a bit. Looks useless. But yeah, looks useless half the time. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> a bit rude. Harsh, but true. true. <laughs> um, and Buku Kamas was um, playing in defence. So mm. after he kicked 40 goals in the VFL last year, uh, yeah. Bulldog struggled at times to kick goals. We're going to chuck him in the back half. Let's see how we go. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just don't know about that one. I yeah. just, I think he should have went trying to go somewhere else. Yeah. But. We'll, we'll see how that pans out. I'm surprised he didn't go in the trade period, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, next we get to Richmond. Thomas Dow. Uh, looks like he could be a full-time mid for um, Richmond this year. Pretty low price. He's, like a mid, he's only a midfielder, though, so that's kind, mm. of, concer- that's kind of annoying. Um, Shea Bolton is mentioned here, but it says that he's playing in second gear the whole day. Showed a little bit of brilliance, kicked a couple of goals. Not very good to see. Yeah, I'd rather see a lot better. To be honest, it's a bit concerning. It's like, well, yeah, it's I know like it's not match it. him, but it's like... Yeah, mm. I'd like to see a little bit better than that. Um, Jacob Hopper had a massive second half in the in the um, game that I was mentioning. Um, Jack Graham is an interesting one. Um, looks like he's having his best preseason after a, a lot of injury hampered off-seasons in the past. And um, finishing second in the Tigers BNF in 2021, he averaged 84. He is only a forward. 
He's not a midfield forward. Mm. He's only a forward. Jack Graham is an interesting one. He'd be around 500k. Mm. So I'm thinking about him as well. Again, I'm looking at the preseason, see how he goes. But he had a pretty good start. And I think everyone needs to have this guy in their team as a low price defender. It's Josh Gibkiss. Um, obviously, yeah. missed all of last year through injury. He's 256k. He's one of the only ones that I know the exact price of because <laughs> he has not he has not moved. But yeah, he's a he's been good with the ball. He's got some running carry. He's going to get a lot of games this year because he's a young defender and they need almost a regen for Richmond. Mm. I think he's definitely going to be something that they build off of. Um, then we get to St. Kilda, basically the last team we're looking at here. I think we've covered most of them. Um, like I said, go check out Nerds for Life on um, Twitter. I think they're on Facebook as well, so go check them out. He's This guy's covering a lot of information regarding the intra clubs early in the season. We're looking at, uh, for St. Kilda, Darcy Wilson. Had some great moments in their um, intra-club game, and he was the one way back in December who won their 2K time trial. Oh, really? So, yeah, that's an interesting one. He's a forward mid. I think he's I think he's 200K. I think he's... Actually, no, I think he's low 200s. Don't think he's full at the basement price. Um, Brad Crouch didn't play a full game as he's easing into full training. Uh, Jack Steele looked pretty good in posing through the midfield. He's an interesting choice because we've seen that he had an injury hampered season last year. Yeah. And his average, his price point right now is a lot lower than what he's capable of. Mm. Um, Marcus Winhager had some good moments and he's playing against Steele for a lot of those midfield um, yeah. games. He is a defensive midfielder, so he could be a choice early in the season. And Owens offered a lot. He's only a forward, so that's a little bit. A little bit hard to decide at the moment. If the likes of like a Heath was picked, I don't think he's going to be getting a lot more mid, a lot of midfield time early yeah, in the season. Thing, yeah. So I think maybe avoid for now, Mitch Mitch Owens. But yeah, that's kind of all the AFL fantasy news we wanted to talk about so far. Maybe give us one player. Is there one player you're kind of looking at into the preseason before you kind of like they're kind of on the brink of your team? Mine's kind of like sort of Nat Fife, but my main one is Jack Graham. I'm sitting on that one. Maybe bring him into the team, depending on how the preseason's going. Um, um, I'm looking at more the mid, the draftees, like the Sanders, the McCurchers, the Dersmans. So just to see where I just need some forward line, some then some just the forward line players mid price that are lighting it up on a preseason that they can maybe play some midfield minutes. So they can get their price up quickly, and then. Yeah. yeah, work into the season, and then you can like start. That's when you start like trading them out. Yeah, so at, I, their, yeah, at I think their brink. Yeah, I'm more looking at just not the forward one at the moment. Everything else, like just yeah, at the moment, just looking for hopefully no many injuries, but just before line really at the moment. Yep. Okay, that's all good. Yeah.